Open your Bibles to Psalm 138. This is a Psalm of David. Now, scholars have two different opinions when this psalm was written. About half of them believe that this psalm was written when David was leaving Hebron and moving the throne to Jerusalem and ruling over all of Jerusalem, just not Judah. And that's fine. Some believe it's prophetic psalm concerning the captivity of Judah in Babylon and in the return. Now, I have no problem believing that David wrote this psalm when he was transferring the power from Hebron to Jerusalem and unifying Israel. That's fine. He probably most likely wrote it at that time. But I don't believe that this psalm was written for either, either or those either one of those occasions. I believe it was a, is a not a Masonic psalm, but it's a prophetic psalm. Prophetic psalm because we read in Psalm 138, verse 4. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Now, you go back in the book of Revelation, or go forward to the book of Revelation. All the world will bow, and there will be no naysayers believing the Son of God is the King of Kings. When that time arrives. So I believe this is a prophetic psalm looking into the future. Still a prophetic psalm looking into our future. But outside of that, I want you to personalize it tonight. Make this your own personal psalm. Because this is not part of the David series. I might include it later. I might include it now. It'd just be out of the order of when I wanted to present it to you in the series. But I'm always looking at David's life to see it, his habits. And I've mentioned this before that David, according to the scriptures, was a man after God's own heart. You ever, as a kid, or maybe even as an adult, look upon someone and says, if I just could be like that person, or if I just could have some of those habits, some of those disciplines that that person practices and apply it to my life. In other words, you look at that person as a model figure. because you admire that person in the way he conducts his life. Whether it's the spiritual aspect of it or the physical aspect of it. Well, I look at David that way. Not as a model figure, but what was his secrets? What gave him that wonderful acknowledgement by God in His Word to say, that's a man after my, my own heart. That's a man after my own heart. Because I think, not only myself, I think all of us have that desire to be a man or a woman after God's own heart. What a privilege and a calling and an honor that would be 
that God perceives us, looks at us in that manner. So I'm always digging into David's life. I have for years, trying to find out his secrets. I just call him that for now. And here, David's writing, I will praise thee with my whole heart, in verse 1, before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Now, David was in the false god worshiper. He didn't worship a whole bunch of other gods. A better translation there would be Yahweh. Some translations use Elohim. And that's why we have this translation, a mistranslation, gods. I will praise. Now, why will he praise? Because, now I want to jump down to verse 7. i got to go quickly through this message tonight. Let's find out where David's at when he's writing this psalm. Verse 7 reads, Though I will walk in the midst of trouble. Though I walk in the midst of trouble. Now get ready to write a better translation down from the Hebrew. It should read, the way I walk in the center of trouble. Whatever trouble he was having, or he's just writing this song or psalm relating back to his experiences when he was in the center of trouble. Whatever the situation was, though I literally go on in the center of trouble. So write that down. Though I walk and go on in the center of the trouble. David's not stopping. Oh, he cries a lot in his psalms. But he didn't sit down and have a weeping party. He didn't sit down and have a pity party. For very long. He knew that even though he was in the center of trouble, God would give him the strength to walk right out of it. To walk right out of the center of that trouble. So write down, though I walk and go on in the center of trouble, that will revive. That will revive me, thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Now, everything leads up to what Dave was referring to. Usually in his Psalms, he gets to the bad news first, and then it turns into good news. In this psalm, it's just the reverse. So what's some of his secrets that make him a man after God's own heart? So now we know exactly what he's referring to. He's in some kind of trouble. He's right in the center, in the middle of it. And he understands that he's going to walk right out of it. So therefore, now I'll go back to verse 1. I will praise, I will praise, a better translation would be, I will acknowledge and give thanks. Let's just write that down as secret number one. What to do when you find yourself right in the center of trouble? 
I will acknowledge and praise with my whole heart. Not with just some of it, not with just a piece of it. But with his whole heart, before the Yahweh, will I sing praise unto thee. So write down number one. When he finds himself in the center of trouble, he acknowledges that God is there and he gives thanks. Why? Because without God being there, he's going to be in one awful mess. Because God would become his strength. God would stretch out his right arm. Verse 2, I will worship toward the holy temple and praise thy name for the loving kindness and for the truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So David finds himself not only acknowledging and giving thanks, but he's Worshipping toward the holy temple. Now which holy temple is that? Because there's no temple built in his day. And praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth he's praising the Lord for his faithfulness to his word he's worshiping and praising the Lord first he acknowledges and gives thanks to the Lord for being there with him in that center of tr the trouble that he is in and he worships number two write that down Recognizing God's faithfulness to His Word. Like I said, this has other applications, I believe, in prophecy. But we're personalizing it to us to, tonight. Not to some prophetical events that are coming in the future. When you find yourself in a center of trouble, you acknowledge and give thanks that God is there with you. And you worship and praise because you understand that He is faithful to his word. That's secret number two. Let's continue reading. In that day, or in the day, when I cried, thou answered me, and strengthened me with strength in my soul. David's secret number three. He answers, answers what? Prayer. And he strengthens with strength. It doesn't leave you feeble. What if I don't get the answer right away? Keep praying. Keep acknowledging, giving thanks. Keep praising that God is faithful to His Word. So number three, He answers and He strengthens with strength. That's secret number three. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear thy words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Well, all the kings of the world haven't done that yet. That's another time. Verse six. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly. But the proud, he knoweth afar off. Now let's look at this verse quickly. The Lord be high, yet he has respect unto. It's not a good translation. What does that mean, hath he respect unto? Circle those words, respect unto. 
Write this down. To see with the eyes, literally, God is seeing you in that center of trouble with his own eyes. In other words, he has his eyes on you. And the Hebrew also has an added meaning to it. Not only he's perceiving you with his eyes in the center of your trouble, he's seeing you and he has concern for you. David, secret number three. To see with the eyes and to be concerned with an individual that's after God's own heart. Why? Because he cares for the downtrodden in that center of trouble. That's number four. Let's keep reading. So I walk in the midst of the trouble. We already corrected that translation. That will revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of my enemies and thy right hand shall save me. David knew God would save him in that center of trouble that he found himself in. I don't know what your center of trouble is tonight. But I want you to write these points down. And when you find yourself in a center of trouble, if you are in a center of trouble, now or in the future, remember what got David through. And remember, he was a man after God's own heart. Point number five was God saves. Point number six in verse eight, the Lord will perfect or complete that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. There's two points there. That he attends to our concerns, point number six. And seven is everything that we read all these different points, all seven of them, here it says, O Lord, forever. If you're in the King James, it says, endure it forever. Endure it, put in the italics there. O Lord, forever. That means it is everlasting. He revives us in verse 7. Remember, this is not a place this center of trouble you're in. This is not a place where he abandons us or fails us. It's a testing ground. It's a place where we have an opportunity to trust God. It might seem like a hopeless place. But let's not forget that he will stretch out his right hand against whatever you face in whatever center of trouble you are in. That's the Lord we serve. And if God be for us, who can be against us? I repeat. To the physical and non-physical, the human pawns and the evil spiritual beings behind the scenes. God is for me. So who do you think you are that you think that you could be against me and get away with it? God sees all. That's the promise and point number Four, he sees all. He sees with his eyes. He has his eyes on us. Why? Because he has concern for us. He cares for the downtrodden. And he stretches out his right arm. In the Hebrew, 
It symbolizes strength and power. Their strength and power that God provides us in the center of our troubles. That's what we have to learn to trust in, like David did, that God is for me, so who could be against me? These are the things I look for when I study David's life. It's almost like his secret weapons in the scriptures that we see over and over. And this is just a few that I'll point out in this series. Many more to come to see how a man could be titled and was titled David that is a man after God's own heart someone like that needs to be studied we need to pull from scripture everything we can from David's life and learn to apply it in our life because it's obvious scripture says so it pleased God and what pleases God it should be our concern some of the things that we need to do don't forget when you're in the midst of the troubles and it's right in the center of it is to acknowledge give thanks remember that he is faithful to his word so worship and praise him for that and he answers prayer and he strengthens with strength he sees us with his own eyes and he's concerned it might not seem like that because it seems hopeless in that center of the trouble but he's concerned and he's figuring out a way he's long gone from figuring it out he's already figured it out but we're waiting for the answer and the answer always is that God saves because he cares for us and his mercy is everlasting. He does not leave us nor forsake us. With that, if God be for us, who can be against us? Now, this is a short message, but hopefully it drives the point home what to do in the center of trouble when you find yourself in that place. If you got it, let me know. Play a song.